Good morning, everybody. Jim Feist and Hank Goldberg here in Las Vegas. Uh, congratulations, Hank. You had a great night last night. Uh, Nick Mullins had broken some uh, records uh, in Southern Miss. Uh, that Brett yeah, Favre... he only broke Brett Favre's records there. And uh, Favre sent him a text message via, or a voicemail before the game uh, wishing him well. Yeah, he's a guy who wasn't drafted. Uh, he was signed as a free agent. And uh, he threw the ball very well. He came out with confidence right away. It's a tribute to that coach, too. He set him up on that first series with uh, passes he could complete. And again, it shows you how terrible the Raiders are. Uh, you, just, you want to make money, you go on Kansas City and go against the Raiders. The Raiders are a joke. Yeah, the uh, the great uh, John Gruden train robbery. In the way, I mean, totally overpaid. Um, if anybody wants to play for the Raiders, it's only because they want to come to Vegas. That's the only reason. But uh, well, you know, it's, yeah, I, I think that's true. And the other thing is, uh, you know, Brent Musburger will pick you every week. <laughs> Did he pick them last night too? I don't know. Uh, the the uh, Review Journal doesn't publish them on Thursday, so. Okay. But he op he opened up the uh, pregame show for the football network. Pathetic. It is. It is a pathetic uh, team, and uh, it's a, it's a mess. But congratulations to Nick Mullins and Kyle Shanahan's a great uh, a great coach. I loved him. What he did in Atlanta and their offense, and he's doing the same. You know, they're going to be really good. But right now, they've got a few too many quarterbacks that can play. I know Garoppolo's going to come back. Beathard looks like he has potential. And now this kid, Mullen, uh, they can't keep three of them. They're going to have to do something. But uh, Well, you know the one they're going to keep. <laughs> well, that's for sure, yeah. He's also the most expensive. So the, um, yeah, but there's no contest there. The, well, the contest is between Mullen and Beathard. That's probably where it's going to come down to. But uh, anyway, well, uh, Mullen doesn't cost them any money. You know, he signed as a free agent, and you know, I don't know what kind of contract he has, but I think it's minimum. And uh, you know, they, they can keep him around for a couple of years for nothing. Yeah, and that's probably what they'll do, unless somebody comes along and offers a big, big number to get him. He looked better than some. I mean, Jackson. He looks better than anybody Jacksonville has. But, uh, of course, they don't have Kyle Shanahan calling the plays either. But uh, Breeders' Cup today, Hank, in a couple of hours, you've got a lot of plays up. Go to jimfeist.com. Hank's plays are up there right now, ready to go. You want to win some money at the track? Breeders' Cup starts in a few hours. We've got races today and tomorrow. Hank, uh, you always do real well in these big races. This is This should be a really big weekend for you. And, of course, we've got... A lot of NFL well, stuff. I, I, I would just say this. The, the, the favorite in the classic is beatable. And I've got uh, any one of three horses that I'm going to give out uh, on the service that have an excellent chance to win uh, that race, and, uh, including one horse who I like on top, who's a double-digit uh, odd. So uh, you might want to you know, call in for that. No, I think they... If they want to make, unless they don't like money, I would suggest they do. Yep, go to, go to the uh, website right now, jimfeist.com, and pick up Hank's horses. Be sure. You know, this is a great weekend, Jim, because you got some great matchups in college football. You got Penn State playing Michigan. That should be a whale of a game. And you got uh, LSU and Alabama. And for a change, you don't have to give up 30 points. If you want Alabama, you can get them for two touchdowns. And uh, those are two very interesting games that uh, feature teams that are trying to get, uh, you know, in that uh, final four. So, uh, you know, Penn State uh, could give Michigan a game, but uh, this Michigan State team is looking pretty good since they can score, and they've got great defense. And uh, But uh, hopefully they'll get good weather. But, by the way, the rain is supposed to stop today uh, in Kentucky, so uh, it'll be a soft turf course, and, uh, but uh, that main track dries out quickly. 
Well, that, that's great. <laughs> we get better quality racing if we have that. Uh, we got a big weekend of uh, pro football as well as the college games. This is a great weekend, Hank. I'm excited yep. for it. <laughs> I expect to collect a lot of cash on this one. And uh, any games? Well, we got the the big game between two quarterbacks. That everybody always have the discussion: who's better? You know, Brady or Aaron Rodgers? Um, well, I'll tell you one stat. And that is that, uh, well, the game went to five and a half. But uh, Rodgers has only been a six-point or higher underdog five times in his career. And he's covered eight times. Yeah. Interesting trend. And, you know, and when you go back to last week, if he'd have gotten the ball with two minutes and five seconds to go, they might have beaten, been the first team to beat the Rams this year. Because the odds well, are, but you could look at it the other way. The Rams left seven points on the field, and uh, otherwise they would have covered. Uh, they covered it. True. A lot of things uh, turned. To, you know, there were some plays in that game that made a big difference. Anyway, this is a big weekend. You got Pittsburgh playing against Baltimore Ravens, and that's that's huge. And that's a, that's a huge division game. Um, that we should all want to watch and get involved in. I have a side in that game as well. Um, you got <laughs> Kansas City going to Cleveland. How dysfunctional. I don't know. Who's more dysfunctional, the Raiders or, or the Browns? Well, uh, uh, the Raiders at least have a plan. You know, they, uh, he's in the first year of a 10-year contract, and he's going to build through the draft. And the people who are historians, go back to Jimmy Johnson when he came in and uh, traded Herschel Walker for all those draft picks. And uh, if you look at who all those draft picks became, I, I can't name them all right now, but Russell Maryland was one, uh, the great running back from, uh, uh, from the University of Miami was another. Uh, anyway, he picked five guys up in the draft in that trade for Herschel Walker uh, I think most of them are in the Hall of Fame right now. Uh, and so let's wait and see on the, on the Raiders. I'm not saying that uh, Gruden is as uh, bright as Jimmy, but uh, the headline in the Dallas papers after they traded Herschel away for all Joe's draft picks were that Dallas, uh, the, the new Dallas guy didn't know what he was doing, whereas Tom Landry, what happened to all those great executives? Where's our tradition? Uh, Dallas is on the way down the two. Look what happened. Three Super Bowls. Well, you know, from from the standpoint of the fact that this team's coming to Vegas and we want Vegas to do well, Las Vegas Raiders, et cetera, et cetera, I hope that happens. But you can't always find, not all draft choices work out. Jimmy Johnson was, you know, he's a college guy. He knew his players. He drafted well, and you're right. He, he did a fantastic job there. Um, Gruden, let's see if he can do it. He, I mean, he's got a 10-year contract, and, and God bless anybody that's paying him $10 million a year for what he's doing right now, but let's hope it turns around because right now it's, it's an ugly mess. But uh, there's other things to look at. The Browns are starting off with a uh, new coaching situation, and, so are the Cleveland Cavaliers as well. And Cleveland, they always, they always have drama in that city. But um, a lot of football games this weekend. That uh, well, the big game, the biggest game, I think, is in New Orleans. Uh, you know, it's not just a battle of quarterbacks; it's a battle of teams. Probably the two best teams in football playing each other. And uh, Peter Schrager picked the, the Rams, so I will go with New Orleans. <laughs> So, what did he try to say? <laughs> That's I can't remember the last time you picked a winner on television. Really? That's besides the point. Uh, the, uh, I, I think that uh, I think New Orleans is playing as well as any team in the league right now. They're home. Uh, they're, they would like to stay home in the postseason. Last week, they, uh, they beat a good team, uh, on the, and they were on the road. And uh, they, their defense held up very well. 
And not only that, but, uh, you know, Breeze threw for 120 yards. They are a real uh, good running team. And uh, the Rams uh, do have a little bit of a problem defending the run. Uh, and uh, I, I think that uh, I think that the other game that I'm looking at this week is Seattle. Uh, I think Seattle has come around now. Their home field advantage. Uh, they they uh, they're two and zero at home, and they, they Pete Carroll's done a great job there, restoring the Seattle team. They're playing the Chargers, who uh, everybody is jumping on board. But I'll tell you something about the Chargers. They're facing a team this week that has 11 sacks. Uh, their secondary is, is playing great ball right now. Uh, they are first in rushing since week three. And the Chargers uh, do not play the run particularly well. And uh, they're not a great team on the road, frankly. I think the Chargers could be in trouble in that game. Yeah, this is a this is a classic matchup, you know. Between uh, maybe we go back to the quarterback situation. You have Philip Rivers and Russell Wilson. You know, two very very good players. Excellent, as a matter of fact. Um, Wilson, of course, has has had a lot of success at the higher level when he gets to the Super Bowl, and uh, I I agree with you. I think Seattle is a is in a hell of a good spot. And um, there, there's some great matchups. There really is. Russell know, uh, or uh, Rivers struggled against Jacksonville in the game played uh, over in England. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't look good over there at all. Of course, Jack. That's almost Jacksonville's home field. <laughs> Just joking. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, Jacksonville right now is not a good football team. They're not the team they were last year, and they gave him all kinds of trouble. Seattle is a better defense right now. Playing, he likes Seattle's home advantage better than uh, Jacksonville's uh, home advantage in London. Oh, that's that's why I, that's why I agree with you, Hank. I'm not arguing with you. I agree. Seattle is in a good spot this week, and uh, I'm just reinforcing the point. I got you. I got you. Now I'm a big Russell Wilson fan. I like uh, what Pete Carroll's done there. I like the running game. They built with Davis and Carson, and uh, they're starting to look a little bit more like Seattle than what they did earlier in the year. Uh, they're a very dangerous team. They're not somebody that uh, you can uh, just discount. If they make the playoffs, they could be very dangerous. Very I'll dangerous. tell you something else. I think Seattle has the number one punter in the league right now, and uh, uh, the Chargers have a problem with their kicking. Yeah, it's amazing. They can't uh, they can't shore up that kicking game at all. It's just no matter what they do, uh, they're they're very weak in that area. No question. So uh, check mark next to the Seattle special teams. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, you got um, Tampa Bay. Fitz Magic is back. They're visiting Carolina. Uh, Given a good weather condition, that should be a very high-scoring game. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Carolina's playing very well right now. Uh, they have won nine straight games at home, seven and two against the spread at home, and they're going against the worst defense in the league. Yeah. <clears throat> Another game, Detroit visits Minnesota. Now, Detroit got rid of Tate. I, I, I didn't understand that move this time of year because they're in the mix for that division. Any idea why they did that? And No, I don't. And Detroit, by the way, is uh, I think they won the last two times they played at Minnesota. They always play well there. I'm very leery about that game because uh, I don't trust the Minnesota quarterback. And the, uh, Minnesota doesn't have a running game. Uh, but uh, and Minnesota uh, is not uh, strong defensively against the run. So, uh, but I, I don't get that move at all. And, no, I don't either. Yeah, he's a big play guy. Yeah, and he's really uh, quality. You know, he gets a lot of yards after the catch, and he's 
talented guy. It's going to help Philadelphia a lot. I didn't get it. I know they don't want to pay him the big money at the end of the year, but this is not the end of the year. So, you know, it's kind of like they gave up a little bit on uh, on this season, which is a terrible, terrible indictment. It's uh, the, the, the Detroit's uh, covered three of the last four meetings in 11. The over has gone 11 and 5 since 2016 in that series. Interesting situation there. Any other games that look uh, well? Atlanta visits Washington. I don't think I don't think Washington is as good as their division leading record shows. But Atlanta's defense has been terrible all year. I think Washington is as good. I think their defense is excellent, and their schedule really favors them the rest of the way. They only play one team with a winning record on the rest of this schedule in their last eight games, and that's Houston, a team they could beat. Uh, so I, I wouldn't write Washington off too quickly. Of course, they're, they're, they're playing all losing teams in their division, and I think Dallas is probably going to come on and be their big challenger along with Philadelphia. I don't like Philadelphia. I don't like the way they're playing right now. Uh, I think they, they really helped the quarterback. Uh, but uh, but Washington is playing good enough to win every week, and the odds makers have not caught up with them yet. You don't have to give any points with them. They just have to win. And as Al Davis used to say, just win, Washington. <laughs> you mentioned Houston. Interesting thing where, where um, Denver traded um, what, uh, Thomas to Houston, and now they're playing each other, so all he really has to do is stay home and change uniforms. It's an interesting matchup. Houston's playing very well. They've won five straight games, and uh, the Denver Denver team has just struggled. I mean, yeah, they've been able to cover again when they play Kansas City, but they haven't looked very good to me. This will be the coach's last game. Uh, if, if Houston beats them, and I think they can, uh, you know, he's like 7 and 15 and 2, talking about Joseph. And uh, he's, uh, if he loses, they go to a bye. Good time to make a change. <laughs> Vance Joseph's record against the spread, 2 15 and 2. That's, that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Well, a lot of those games are on the road. And uh, he only has one cover on the road, I think, and that was against Arizona. Yep. It's, uh... Dallas, we talked about Dallas. You know, they added um, the wide receiver just like Philadelphia did. So we have two teams in that division that added wide receivers that I believe will both help quite a bit. And... Um, I think I, I think Cooper, you know, one thing about Philadelphia, they don't have uh, they don't have uh, a healthy running game, and uh, I, that's why I think that Cooper is more valuable to Dallas actually, because uh, he opens up the passing game, and his, and Ezekiel is going to have some room to run now because they won't be able to jam the box against them anymore. They now have two good receivers in the lineup. That's a giant move that Dallas made. And I told you the other day about the moves they made with the offensive line, uh, promoting uh, uh, one of the assistants to offensive line coach and bringing back Hudson Howe to oversee uh, the offensive line play. So the Jones uh, son and father have made some critical moves in the last week that I think are going to propel them. And they're 3-0 and at home this year, and you know, uh, they've got to travel a little bit better than they have been. But they're going to be a tough team to defend now because they've got uh, Amari uh, as, a, as a deep threat. And like I said, that's, that's huge concern for defenses who no longer will be able to stack the box again. I agree with you. I think Dallas is going to become very dangerous now, being able to take the top off the defense. And I'm not, I actually like Dak Prescott. I think he does a good job. Uh, he's a fairly accurate passer. He doesn't have a, a lot of weapons, but um, he, he run the ball well. They got Beasley, and they got, you know, 
Elliott, which, I mean, they're, they're, I think they're going to be tough going forward. The second half should be very strong for them. Okay, we agree. Uh, can we close now? i got to get going. Okay. Everybody, Hank's picks are available at jimfeist.com. Go there now for his uh, horses, sports picks. He's been winning. He's going to continue winning. I'm up there, too, and I've been doing well as well. Hank, have a great day. This is going to be a great weekend. I'm really looking forward to it. Me too. Okay.